Hello, Colorado Realtors. I'm Scott Peterson. Thank you for joining me for another quarantine edition of Legal Bites. Uh, I can stop saying that probably because you guys know when that door's closed, I'm sitting here in my home office uh, under quarantine. And uh, this, these will always be quarantine editions. I'm hoping we can end this soon. Uh, but for the time being, here I am just doing my best to stay out of my own way and everybody else's way. Uh, and I'm doing a pretty good job of it, I think. So uh, it's Wednesday, the 15th of April, uh, tax day in, in a normal non-COVID world. Uh, but in uh, the COVID world, I think tax day has been extended out by, I think, three months. Uh, don't hold me to that, but I think it's a few months anyhow. So not even tax day, April 15th. Uh, it's about three, just before four o'clock on, uh, on the 15th. And um, I haven't, haven't done a, a legal bite since I think Thursday or Friday of last week when we sort of initially got our, our clarification from the Division of Real Estate and the AG's office and governor's office related to the stay-at-home order and, and kind of how that, uh, hand, how that uh, addresses uh, us in, in the real estate profession and what the limitations are. And so, uh, as you might imagine, over the course of the last several days, I've had a ton of questions, a ton of questions about um, the creative ways that people are thinking about they might interpret the order um, and uh, some other things that they're, they're doing out there. So I wanted to just kind of uh, follow up on that and, and break down maybe a little bit better what the order says and, and give you some additional thoughts on, on the order. Uh, so as, as I think I mentioned last week, they, they've really delineated between marketing and, um, and real estate transactions. So what the order provides for is a real estate transaction. And, and while we would love to see the uh, concept of a real estate transaction interpreted very broadly, uh, it is in fact been uh, more narrowly interpreted based on some activities that uh, drew the attention of the attorney general's office. And so a real estate transaction really starts at the contract and goes through the closing. And by contract, I don't mean the exclusive right agreements. I mean the buy-sell contract between a buyer and a seller. So it's at that point that a handful of uh, in-person brokerage services can take place. And that would be, um, you know, inspections, walkthroughs, and attending the closing. Uh, that once the buyer and seller have executed a contract, then, then that's when a broker could perform those, uh, some of those services that are required in person. So anything before the execution of a contract is uh, essentially a marketing activity and, and would not qualify as appropriate under the order. And so I know everybody's up in arms about the showings piece. And I get that. I understand there's a lot of implications to uh, not being able to do showings, for, to perform showings, and have heard an awful lot about that. Certainly, uh, that would not be the view or the limited view that, that we, CAR, would support. Um, and we have advocated aggressively uh, with the attorney general's office and others that in fact, you know, showings are a pretty important component to a real estate transaction, obviously. But uh, at this point, it sort of is what it is. And of course, the governor's order goes through the 26th of April. So uh, another, you know, week and a half, two weeks away, uh, 11 days away, I guess. So uh, anyhow, what what I want to what I want to address, though, is that, you know, people then have called and said, well, can we do photography? In other words, as a listing broker, could I go and do a FaceTime or a virtual tour? Or can I go do photography? Can I go take pictures myself and utilize those for a new listing? Could I go on a listing appointment? Um, could, could, uh, could we do you know, some other form of Zoom virtual tours? Whatever have you. Um, and unfortunately, the answer to that from, from, well, what I know is the interpretation uh, it would be no. Those, those activities, those in-person brokerage services that, that, that people are asking about, those that take place prior to the contract are part of the marketing phase and would not be exempted as a critical business under the current uh, interpretation of the executive order. And so I know that's not what people want to hear. And I understand there creates all kinds of uh, you know, pitfalls and limitations to bringing a new listing to market. What I would say, though, is that a seller could certainly, you know, take some photographs if they've got a, a real sense of urgency related to getting their house on the market, you know, as soon as possible, then at least some, some photographs could be taken by a seller. I have heard about 
situations where a seller has even been willing to do virtual tours themselves, essentially, you know, through Zoom or FaceTime or some other some other system or service where they can actually, you know, essentially walk a buyer, a potential buyer around their house virtually. Um, I think it makes sense to the extent that you're using technology like like a, a Google Hangouts or Zoom or something like that, where you as the listing broker could also be on that call with a buyer and theoretically a buyer's agent uh, as your sellers walking people around and, and providing that. I, I know none of this is ideal, but but those would be solutions uh, to the you know urgent situations, uh, at least to the extent that you uh, care to be and the parties care to be compliant with the uh, expectations of the current executive order. And, uh, and similarly, a seller taking photographs, obviously they're in a home, they're doing it within their home. They're perfectly free to do that and, and, and be there. Uh, it's just the other people, buyers, buyers, agents, listing agents, uh, in person technically should not, should not be present for that. So I know those aren't ideal situations or solutions, but, but I, they could be a, a short-term band-aid in, in the really strong anticipation for all of us in the state of Colorado that by April 26th, this this order is lifted and that we're starting to sort of re-implement um, business into uh, into the state and, and hopefully, you know, very soon after that within the entire country. So, uh, so again, at this point, I think you, you need to have a contract in order to um, really do anything in person. I'm going to, I'm going to mention uh, cautiously uh, something that I've heard a lot of people calling and, and I think is, is maybe has a little bit of uh a little bit of traction, and that is the concept of doing a contract uh, on a property that's not been seen by a buyer. And so what I'm hearing about is a buyer that would write a contract and a seller would accept the contract, sign the contract. So a buyer hadn't seen the property, they hadn't physically been in the property yet. But now once they have that contract, then I do think the contemplation of the order would certainly allow for a buyer at that point and their buyer's agent to physically go and, and view the property in person. And so what I've seen or heard about are clauses that are being put into a contract that essentially says, you know, upon execution uh, or, you know, that within for the first 48 hours, the buyer has an opportunity to um, do a, you know, post contract walkthrough uh, or something, some language to that effect. The, the, the net of it being a, a physical in person uh, ability to actually tour the property. And then I think if you're going to do that, it's, it makes a lot of sense to probably make sure that that is done and that contingency expires prior to the delivery of the earnest money. And so that the buyer then would have an opportunity to sign a contract with the seller, go physically and, and tour the property, view the property in person. And then it, they would either have an ability to terminate the contract and, and not perform any other additional obligations, including the delivery of earnest money. Or they would have an opportunity to deliver the earnest money and obviously carry on with, you know, the other elements of the contract, uh, inspections, additional walkthroughs, or a, a final walkthrough, and then the closing itself. And all of those could obviously be done in person too. So I know there's some some creative ways to kind of think and work around this that I think are consistent with that, at least with the, with the uh, letter of the executive order. And, and that is one solution that I've heard about people using uh, to... Uh, help get some physical presence in the property before a buyer uh, actually, you know, goes through and, and pays for an inspection and appraisal and all those other things uh, to make sure that, that that it is a property that they want to pursue. The last thing I'm going to touch on today is, uh, you know, I've been getting a ton of calls about, you know, what I guess I'd describe as sort of the bad actors out there and from brokers that are essentially saying, listen, I'm, I'm, we're adhering to the, to the letter or spirit of the order. Uh, we're not showing properties. We're not scheduling showings. We're not allowing that to happen. And yet we're hearing about all sorts of people that are just forgetting, you know, not, not adhering to it. And, and it's creating a lot of uh, frustration in the marketplace uh, between the, the people that are sort of following the rules and the people that, that aren't following the rules. And I, I guess what I would say to that is, you know, I, I, or what I have said to that, to the numerous calls I've had is that, you know, in, in any professional environment, in the, in, in the good times and bad times, you're going to have people that are going to be rule followers and you're going to have people that are going to be rule breakers. And that doesn't justify anybody's behavior. Um, it just, it, it's just a, a fact of kind of the matter that, that some people are going to take a more strict uh, accounting of themselves when it comes to, uh, you know, any rule, whether it's speeding or jaywalking or, or, you know, staying at home pursuant to an executive order in this, in this kind of uncertain time. So, um, you know, the, 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 the car is not a enforcement agency. In other words, we are not 
uh, enforcing these rules. These aren't ours to enforce. We don't have any enforcement or oversight capability at all. Uh, I am hearing about some MLSs that are taking some actions uh, with regard to, you know, specifically not scheduling showings. I'm hearing about potentially uh, some fine schedules that are coming out for people that uh, MLS participants that are that are you know, not adhering to the executive order. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that to the MLSs in terms of how they want to handle that. You know, car, we don't own an MLS and we are not an MLS. And ultimately that's going to be up to the, to the MLS, uh, leadership board of directors, uh, any of their third party vendors that actually, uh, schedule and, and, and facilitate showings. Uh, so that's a, a different discussion. Um, to the extent that there's enforcement to be had, that enforcement would take place potentially through a complaint to the Division of Real Estate. And to the extent that uh, those activities might be considered un incompetent or unworthy practice, then I think the Division of Real Estate could potentially uh, pursue uh, some investigation there. Uh, to the extent that it wasn't a license law or commission rule violation, I think there's a, a pretty good likelihood they would refer that complaint to the Attorney General's office. And then what would probably follow is some form of cease and desist letter uh, as we saw in the earlier uh, situation before, you know, the showings were sort of precluded on a statewide basis. And so um, anyhow, I, you know, I think everybody's going to have to be responsible for sort of policing themselves and, and, and trying to uh, act within, you know, the expectations of this order and the sort of social contract that's there. And that said, I know there's a lot of people that are, you know, you're getting pressure from your buyers, from your sellers. Uh, there's a lot of uh, frustration and uncertainty, but I, I don't think uh, there's a lot of amb ambiguity with regard to what what can be done and can't be done. And I hope this video has at least helped um, try to clarify a little bit uh, what can be done and, and can't be done. And, uh, you know, I'll continue to, to kind of digest this stuff as I get hotline calls and other uh, queries from around the state. And to the extent that uh, it makes sense to, to bring additional information to you guys through Legal Bytes, I'll continue doing that as well. So anyhow, I'm going to leave it there uh, today. I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and sane and, uh, and uh, you know, hanging in there. I, I know it's a tough time. It's, we're all we're all kind of dealing with the same uh, uncertainties and uh, we will be uh, on, on, at least I can speak from, from car standpoint, uh, doing what we can to, uh, you know, move us out of this, the, the limitations of this executive order uh, as soon as, as soon as, you know, the, the medical and health and government experts sort of indicate that it makes sense to do that. So uh, stay, stay tuned. I'll, I'll keep you posted as I can. If you have questions, legal hotline is available from nine to 12 and one to four. It has been really, really busy as you might imagine. And so if you call, leave a message, just be patient. Somebody will get back to you, you know, usually within an, uh, an hour or two hours at, at most. But um, do understand that the call volume has been uh, off the charts. So um, hope that helps and uh, stay safe and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much.